Hello, and welcome to Vapor Review Blog. This is going to be a slightly different episode than we've had in the past. I had a little bit of a microphone mishap before I filmed this, so I had to bring this microphone in, and I figured, why don't we change up the format and, uh, and go on a little tour? Back in 2013, so three years ago, uh, I went to Germany for a vacation with my wife, and while I was out there, I gave Stores and Bickle a call. That's the manufacturers of this fine vape right here. And I said, uh, do you guys mind if I come in and take a look around, maybe take some pictures? I'm real interested in how you guys build this thing. Uh, they said, sure. Why? I said, because I want to. So I did. I went to Germany. I put up a bunch of pictures on my website from, from that trip. But you know, not many people have seen them. Not many people know what they're looking at because they didn't put in real great uh, comments. Comments? Is that what it is? Whatever. And so why don't we go on a tour together? I'll tell you a little bit about the trip and you guys can watch these things get built in, um, you know, in a little slideshow. So let's, uh, let's jump right in. First and foremost, this is on, on my website, vaporreviewblog.com. I actually ended up having to go into the search bar up at the top and type in the word tour just to find this. Not everything is very well indexed on the site. So that is something that I'm going to work on and get you uh, slightly better indexing so you guys can actually find these pictures in the future. Um, the very first picture is a little bit out of order, but this is a box that was in their uh, kind of assembly area with all sorts of little parts. I mean, each box had different parts for a different vaporizer of theirs. Then if you go, this is really the first picture of the, uh, of the slideshow. And this is the accounting office at Stores of Bickle. They said, do you want to take a picture of accounting? I can't do a German accent, I guess. Uh, and I said, uh, yeah, why not? And and so we have a picture of their accounting. Look at this. These are all of their little brochures in, in the assorted languages that they offer them in Italian, Dutch, Spanish, French, and German. And of course, more component bins. One thing that you're going to find uh, in this video and in the way Stores and Bickle keeps all of their components is very, very well organized. Everything is labeled. Everything has a picture. So, you know, even if it's not in English, you can still look at the picture and figure out what it is. Let's move on. Oh, we skipped one. Look at this. No smoking here at Stores and Bickle. Even though they make vaporizers, especially because they make vaporizers, you shouldn't be smoking, especially not indoors. More component bins. And these are actual, um, I believe these are components that are uh, very specific to the region that they're to be used in. So they're very clearly labeled. More component bins with bins with O-rings. More component bins. And these are uh plenty cl i couldn't tell you a little stores and bickle logo etched into the glass and here on the left side you can see already finished volcanoes they're completely assembled and on the right side is just the upper shell of the volcano and then in the background of the picture you can see a bunch of plenties that are all lined in and plugged in and they're probably being tested before they get packaged up this is one of the qa uh, personnel at Stores and Pickle, Quality Assurance. One of the very few people who wanted to get his picture taken. Everybody else ran away from the camera. And may I add, I went there on a Friday in early December. Uh, Christmas is a pretty big deal in Germany. And uh, when I called and said I was coming on Friday, the uh, marketing manager said, you know, no one's going to be here. And I said, what do you mean no one's going to be there? They said, well, we're going to have three or four people here. I said, all right, I'll show up. Three or four people. We'll do what we can. Uh, but it was definitely worth the trip. But really, there were less than a dozen people working there when I got there in the late afternoon. This is a little testing station where I believe these are for the plenties. They they lower the arm, this this whole this whole thing. And you know, I, I have a, a volcano here, guys, and I haven't even used it. So I'm gonna no, no, get this noisemaker going. Hopefully you can hear me over this rumble, but they lower the arm and that is how they lower the arm. And then I believe that tests the temperature. You can see those two yellow devices are temperature uh, probes or thermometers that have temperature probes attached to them. And there's our uh, friend again doing the quality assurance. And there are the uh, shells, the top shells of the volcano again.
Ah, there he is, our friend from Quality Assurance. Making sure that your volcanoes, your plenties, your mighties, and your crafties are all working well before they get to you. This is where they assemble the easy valve bags. So these are the bags that are not uh, meant to be replaced. They're meant to be disposable. And this press where the chair is, uh, that, that closes the top and bottom plastic pieces. So these orange pieces in the bins together around the bag and that kind of clamps them closed. And then this next station here, well, after this one, these are just some plenties. These are the bags that they use in large rolls, as you can see. There we go. And this station right here crimps the top of the bag. And that's actually uh, this piece right up here. It's a little noisy with the bag, I know. Oops. So this is how they get the top of the bag sealed. These, I'm not 100% sure on these. I believe that these are the transformers. So these, this is the piece that takes the electricity from your wall and brings it to some electricity that the volcano can use. These are assembled volcanoes with no caps on them, none of the aluminum tops. These are plenties that are being tested. And this is how they keep the uh, volcano lids, the volcano aluminum cap from scratching each other up when they're, uh, when they're waiting to be assembled. So these are volcano classics, you can tell by the dial. And <clears throat> the dial is all wired in and then all the leads are just brought out through the top there. So it's ready for assembly. These are empty bottom shells, more component bins. I have lots of pictures of component bins, guys. More parts and component bins. So on the left side, those are heaters. Then they're, the green and yellow are just, mm, it's hard to tell. Might be a, a ground. That might be what they use to ground the volcano. I couldn't tell you what these parts are, but I took a picture of them because they looked organized. Buttons, I'm sure you recognize all of these buttons right over here. Actually, those are, those are switches. These are, those are, maybe I have the old style. I can't tell what the old style and new style is. Those might be the new style switches and I have a button. So this is the button. And those are switch up and down, I believe. Then this is the bottom of the volcano and it's assembled, but there is no insulation around the heater. So that, that cylindrical piece in the middle, that's the heater. No insulation around it yet, but you'll see coming up in the next few pictures, component bins. These are all the wires before they're attached, more component bins. And there you go. You see the insulation is now attached around the heater. And in case you're not sure which part it is, this is the insulation that our friend Michael is pointing at. And, and that is Michael, the marketing manager for uh, Stores and Bickle. And then these are, I believe these are heaters. Tough to tell. More volcanoes that are in different states of assembly. This is in the stairwell. So the, the building is, I think, three stories tall. And as you go from one story to the next, there's this open circular stairwell and they have these cool volcano posters hanging up in them. I'm not sure. This is some sort of testing component. I couldn't quite figure out what this was. More volcanoes. But you see the plug down there. That is an EU plug. Beats me. A volcano and there's Blurry Michael. So this is upstairs at their top floor. This was a storage area where they kept finished volcanoes and plenties. And uh, <coughs> there was one sign that was a little different from all the other ones and it was called the Volcano Medic. No, it's not a new vaporizer they're coming out with. It's just a slightly different version of the volcano that's sold to some countries, but it's really nothing new. Oh, just some bags bins with the uh, quality assurance stickers and all the necessary things and, and the sticker that they use to seal the box. And here are the, uh, the storage areas where you see all the, I believe those are bag kits up top. And then I see digital and classic volcanoes on the bottom. Yep. And then on the other side there, there's also some plenties, I believe on the right side. Highly sensitive electronic equipment. It said there. Let's see, this is uh, plenty 
that Michael took out of the bag just to show me the parts because around the time I went, the Plenty was still relatively new. I hadn't used one yet. I did not get a chance to use it while I was there in Germany. A High Times magazine I saw in the marketing office. And, uh, and then this is the entrance to... Okay, so the warehouse area wasn't on the top, top floor, I believe. It was in an, on the second to top floor. The top, top floor is where they had their lounge, which is what this is. Maybe this is the entrance to that? Quality assurance? That's the door behind us there. This is getting real confusing. It's been a while since I've been there. And plus, they're not even in the same building. So if you think that you're going to get some hearty tips on, on how to build a volcano in their building, don't think so much about that. Foosball in the lounge. Now, this is the volcano bar. It was Christmas time, so of course there's a little tree. And if you look over the bar in the back there, if you look at the light fixtures that are hanging down, those are actually the aluminum tops to the volcanoes. And there are light fixtures that are built inside of them. Isn't that pretty cool? Let's get another bag going. And that's it for the tour, guys. That was the uh, whole tour. I had a real good time going there. Um, they Their offices used to be located in a town in Germany called Tutlingen. Uh, now I'm not sure where they are, but it was um, it's about an hour and a half south of where we were staying in a city called Stuttgart, which is also the home to Porsche. Porsche. And I want to tell you guys a little story about when we were there in their in their office, because I don't want this story to get forgotten. While we were there in their office, about three quarters of the way through the trip, my wife had to go to the restroom. She disappeared. She found a restroom. She went to go use it. She came back and she was taking her phone out of her case. I said, what are you doing? She said, I dropped my phone in the sink. I said, you've dropped your phone in the sink. She said, yeah, it's wet on the inside of the case. I said, all right. Um, how'd you drop your phone in the sink? She's like, oh, I was, you know, I was getting ready to wash my hands and Okay, cool. And then we went about the rest of our uh, wonderful tour. On the drive home, I asked her, I said, why was the sink full of water? <laughs> she looked at me and she goes, I dropped my phone in the toilet. So I just thought that was a pretty funny story. She would have gotten away with it, but I kept thinking about it. I've been thinking about it since she told me. And then I finally had to ask. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. <coughs> thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you for taking this wonderful tour through uh, <coughs> Stores and Bickle's old offices with me. I have, <coughs> ooh, it's a little dry. I have a few uh, other sets of pictures from the time I went to Amsterdam and got to use the sublimator at, at Greenhouse for quite a while. I mean, I was there for a few hours and got a bunch of uh, a bunch of pictures and, and those are up on the site as well. So if you guys are real good at looking for them, you can find them. But I might get another video like that for that or like this for that. So I did go to the Cannabis Cup while I was in Amsterdam. I got to check out a few of the dispensaries. I have pictures of that. The sublimator being used at one of the nicer dispensaries. Uh, what else? Ooh, took a nice little boat canal tour in Amsterdam with uh, Mark Emery, which was quite a trip. Anyway, thank you guys again for watching and have a wonderful day.